Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from uh, my uh, WordPress site uh, where somebody posted a comment on my ham radio homepage, and it's from Lawrence Plum, WA2. TLY. Now he has a fairly convoluted question, so we'll take this step by step. Uh, his first question is, I don't understand how a non-resonant antenna can be as efficient as a resonant antenna. First of all, let's describe antenna efficiency. Okay. In an antenna of any sort, let's say it's fed in the center, Okay, there is a length, there is an ohmic resistance, which is the resistance in the wire, and then there's the radiation resistance. And the radiation resistance is the equivalent resistance, so that you take the voltage and the resistance and you can compute the power that's actually radiated. The efficiency is this radiation resistance divided by the ohmic resistance. Now in a standard uh, 50 ohm dipole, okay, uh, you've got some resistance in the wire. Let's say that it's a 40 meter dipole and a 66 feet long end to end and it's 12 gauge. A-U-G-E, 12 gauge wire, there's going to be minimal ohmic resistance. Okay, so the radiation resistance will be pretty close to the 50 ohms. Now, I and mean, let's see if the radiation resistance is small and this is high, it's an efficient antenna. You've got to normalize this uh, by dividing the whole thing by the total resistance, R, R plus R ohmic. And you'll recognize this as the formula for putting uh, these resistances, the ohmic resistance, in parallel with the ohmic resistance here, okay? All right, so that's the, the resistance. Now let's take a quick look at how antennas work. An antenna works by moving current back and forth. It's the current in the antenna that does the work. A changing current induces a magnetic field. It actually comes all the way around this thing, okay? And then the changing mag change the magnetic field will change because it's um, a change in the magnetic field equals the change in the current. Well, you're going to get electric waves out here too. Now, ideally, in a half wave dipole here, okay, you've got waves being created there being electric waves that come out that are a half wave. It's lambda. I suppose I could draw a decent lambda there. Um, that are a half wave. But if this antenna is a little longer, that's okay. It'll keep radiating out there a little bit. If the antenna is a little bit short physically, well, it'll still kind of radiate. And you've probably got a coil on this. And now here you start getting to the point where uh, the give and take here is that the antenna bandwidth uh, goes, um, goes down as this inductance goes up, okay? But they still uh, moving current like this creates a moving magnetic field, which creates a moving electric field, and the energy propagates away from the antenna, okay? And it really doesn't matter if it's a half-wave dipole or not. The reason that we use half-wave dipoles 
is because they are particularly easy to load. Okay, they're resonant. Resonant, which means that the X uh, sub C, that's the reactance of the capacitance, equals the X sub L, all equals, and this is all zero. Okay, uh, you can put the J in the front if you want. J zero is equal to zero, by the way. That's where the two axes cross, right there. This right here, this little factoid, makes it easy to feed the antenna. So resonant, easy to feed. If you have an antenna that is non-resonant, if the antenna is too short for... Uh, the frequency, in other words, the waves it creates are long like that, okay? You have an antenna that has a resistance which is composed of both the ohmic plus the radiation resistance. And note that as this gets smaller, the radiation resistance gets smaller, and so the efficiency goes down because the radiation resistance gets smaller per the ohmic resistance. That's why we like to have uh, nice long antennas. Now there will be um, J uh, capacitive reactants on that, okay. Uh, now if you get an antenna that's too long here, okay, you're going to have the, the resistance, we'll just lump them, plus J, um, minus J, uh, X sub L. The X, remember, it varies in frequency. Now, given that you have a reactive load, you're going to get return currents. And the way you fix those is down in your tuner, you set up your capacitor and your inductor and your output capacitor in such a manner that the resistance looking this way, I'm going to do this experiment sometime and show you just how this works, but this will be R plus J, X, the capacitance. It's when the R's are equal and these are opposite, we call that the complex, complex meaning complex numbers. They got J's in them, conjugate. And you're saying, what on, why such a big word for the fact that it's just opposite? Well, there is. Engineers like big words sometimes. Okay, the fact that this has to travel back and forth and get bounced back and forth is going to create resistive losses uh, in the ohms, the ohmic part of this. Now, remember that the uh, resistance is equal to the voltage divided by the current, okay? So E equals IR, we move the I down to here. So the voltage over the current. Now, this is the characteristic impedance. If you have a 50 ohms, that means that the voltage is 50 times the current. So 50 volts, one amp. Now, if this is 600 ohms, okay, to send the same amount of power, that would be um, 600 over whatever this current is, I divided by 600. So you get a square type effect there. The idea that if you have high impedance feed line, there is much less loss. The loss comes from the current, not the voltage. Okay, this is why for non-resonant antennas, we very often use ladder line or window line, okay? But the fact is, that the tuner, you've got to have a tuner in here, 
this looks like 50 ohms coming out okay you got to have a tuner in there you can have an antenna that's shorter or longer the shorter it gets the more the radiation resistance goes down relative to the ohmic resistance and vice versa okay so hopefully that helps let's look and see what it is his other questions are I understand that the antenna tuner will add capacitance or inductance to make this antenna appear 50 ohm, uh, 50 ohm, I should say, entirely resistive impedance to the transmitter. You can get close. A lot of the times there will still be a little leftover reactance that's just plain hard to get rid of. Another thing to worry about is that the resistance at the antenna may not be 50 ohms and that is usually the case if you put a um, standard um, um, if you put a standard dipole up as you raise and lower it the feed point resistance changes from anywhere from 30 ohms to 70 ohms and uh, a good tuner can match that out actually act as a transformer as well as a tuner um, but there are sometimes you just can't get it below about 1.5 to 1. okay we'll add capacitance and inductance to make it appear but when the coax or ladder line connect to the antenna that is not resonant not 50 ohm impedance power will be ref reflected back to the tuner he says and maybe the transmitter no, if you've got it adjusted right, you want to reflect the reflected power back to the antenna. Let's say 85% of the power radiates, 15% is reflected. Well, you take that 15% reflected back at the antenna, 85% of that is reflected, so 3 or 4 watts comes back, and then that gets reflected back. So. Um, if you've got a good low loss feed line, like a high impedance, like ladder line and so on, the actual amount of power lost as heat in the feed line is a lot less. If you use 50 ohm coax, that's not necessarily true, because 50 ohm coax can radiate quite a bit of heat. Okay, and what you don't want to do is have this come back into the transmitter, okay? So this ping-ponging back and forth, up and down the transmission line, must have ohmic losses, yes, as well as some impedance loss, no. Uh, remember that impedance, if it is purely reactive, there is no power loss. However, a real capacitor and a real inductor, you look at an inductor, it's a coil. Well, there's interwinding capacitance, so there's a little bit of um, what you would call parasitic capacitance in there. Plus, the wire itself has got ohmic resistance, so there's some parasitic resistance in there. So real components are a little different. I think I'll do a video at some point showing you um, what the real models uh, look like so we can see why it sometimes appears that a capacitor radiates power. They don't but the resistance in them does so uh, ohmic losses yes it does some impedance loss no uh, and thereby lose power yes it does but the higher impedance line you use the less power you will lose in all of this ping-ponging back and forth i've been taught that an swr of two or less was compatible with low loss yeah, you want to trim it down if you can. You can use the internal uh, antenna tuner. Um, antennas would say an 11 even if you can tune them must have high losses. Not must. It depends on the transmission line because that's where the ping-ponging power is lost. If you use a 600 ohm line that's got 12 times the impedance, so you've got 12 times the voltage and 1 12th of the current. You multiply the current and voltage together, you get 144 times less loss. Okay, 
That's why you really ought to look at that if you've got an antenna that you're having trouble matching. Now, an SWR of 10 can be tuned, but there will be a lot of ping-ponging power. Okay, how good of an SWR without a net tuner is tolerable? Some radios like 1.5 to 1 or better. Some 2 to 1 or better. I think about 1.6 to 1 is something to shoot for because you can usually trim a dipole to get it to 50, uh, get it to a 1 to 1 SWR. Now, it may not be 1 to 1, it may be like 1.6 to 1 because the resistance at the feed point might be like 30 ohms or 70 ohms or something like that, okay? So I hope that helps understand that antennas of any length can radiate, but antennas that are resonant are far easier to feed without overlapping stuff. And that if you do have a problem, use ladder line, window line, something like that, so that you can get that squaring ratio working for you and keep from losing the heat that is going back and forth. So there you have it. And until we next meet, 73.